Like, now I don't know how the heck they gonna escape suspicion from the police after all these bodies pop up. But, um... Hi, y'all! And what is up? It's your girl, Sketchbooks and Book Books, also known as Logan. And this girl has currently uh, finished, well not read like currently, I don't know why I said that. Recently I finished A Touch of Gin by Beth Morgan and I've been wanting to do a review on it because sadly it's like it's when you go on Goodreads it does not have the highest of ratings. It's like the average, well not the average, but the most common rating for it is three stars, okay? And I really liked it. I really liked it. I gave it four stars, all right? Um, but anyway, so I just want to get right into the review. Touch of Jen, Beth Morgan. It's weird, okay? Spoiler alert, it's weird. And I will be spoiling it because in order to talk about it fully, I do have to spoil it, I feel, because that's kind of why it's so polarized and why some people like it and then some people were like, this is awful, you know? So here we go. First starting off with just the synopsis. Um, Remy and Alicia are dating each other, okay? And their relationship revolves around Remy's former coworker, Jen. Both of them are obsessed with Jen and jump at the chance to join her on an in real life vacation to Montauk or whatever. And this trip and the infiltration of Jen's inner circle sparks the beginning of bizarre events no one sees coming and no one can stop right that's my little synopsis and then I'm just gonna go right into the characters so Remy my read of him is just an ironically judgmental yet insecure mediocre white man who specializes in manipulation and an astounding lack of self-awareness that's who let that marinate because those were a lot of words right that's a lot of words but yeah basically he a bum an unimpressive bum but he don't know he a bum for some reason he think he's like average and I guess he is average but then it's just like what makes me say he's a bum is how judgmental he would be towards other people and I'm like just like chill sip some humble tea on that just sip some humble tea and pipe down and you would be more likable but anyway Remy He's annoying. Then we go to Alicia, you know, his girlfriend, the other half of this obsessive relationship. Um, I have something in my eye. I think I got it. Mm -mm. That was distracting. Anyway, um, but Alicia, so she and is an insecure, plain woman who seemingly has no true attachment to her own identity. Um, and I think this just comes from her insecurity. And then it's also fueled into this relationship where she knows her boyfriend has a crush on his former coworker that just evolved into an obsession. And then she's just playing into that. Like they literally role play Jen in bed, you know? Just you acting as another girl for your man. That's what Alicia is doing. It's giving weak knees, you know what I'm saying? She just, she's struggling, okay? Alicia is struggling. But then we move to Jake, who is their roommate. And they met another source of like bonding for them because they make fun of him for being a weirdo. When in my opinion, he's the most normal person in this book, honestly. For me, he's the most normal person in this book. In hindsight, Jake was minding his business and knew what he was about he was minding his business, knew what he was about. And I just, that's what I need. It's like, I was upset with Remy and Alicia cause I'm like, they think they call him a weirdo and they make fun of him. And I'm like, y'all are losers. <laughs> y'all know y'all losers though, right? <laughs> come on now, come, come, come collect. But yeah, Jake, so he's their roommate and the weirdo to the weirdos. And like another source of camaraderie between them is like making fun of Jake, even though I like Jake if you couldn't tell. Then we move to Jen. Okay, Jen is like the blue-eyed blonde. She's the popularity queen, you know? She's, everyone loves her, everyone wants to be her. She's that girl, she's the it girl. She is the moment, you know? That's Jen in their eyes at least, okay? But like, she's like mostly, for me, like looking at her as a character, it's hard for me to properly analyze it because, okay, it was just an audiobook that I listened to, well-performed, great audiobook, but like, I haven't bought it or anything because your girl's broke and I really don't want to pay $20 for this, so I have not bought that book. And so I can't 
I haven't highlighted anything. I have no frame of reference for this, okay? Um, but off the dome, I'm like, Jen was probably got a lot of pretty privilege, right? But then I also think that pretty privilege kind of worked against her because she was like exploited in some ways. And I feel also a lot of people projected onto her, right? Because when you do get to know Jen, it's like this girl just figuring out like anybody else, okay? This girl is just like in her late 20s. She's blonde, blue eyed, pretty, but she's still a young adult, you know? She's still just figuring it out. She's just like anybody else, okay? That's who Jen is, really. She's like kind of a superficial mean girl, somewhat, but who isn't, you know? Um, she's stereo She's a stereotypical mean girl, okay? It's think of like Regina George, but she doesn't know she's Regina George, okay? Maybe like a less, like a subtle Regina George is Jen to me, okay? Everyone, I don't know if that makes sense. Hope it does, but that's kind of what Jen was like toned down, you know? And then you have Horace, who's Jen's uh, boyfriend. He's pretty much just a caricature. I'm gonna be honest, all of like Jen's inner circle is kind of, are kind of like caricatures, which I was fine with because I thought this was a satire as well. So I was like, that's fine. He's like a Zen surfer type dude. And I mean, he didn't, he didn't get on my nerves. He was just there, hot dude's name is Horace. They were making fun of his name for being pretentious or something. I was like, I don't care. Sounds foreign. It's better than like meeting someone named Apple to me. Okay. So anyway, then you have Cla Carla. Okay. Who is like Jen's best friend. Um, the closest thing to Jen's best friend. And she's also like, she, she's turns out to be more important than the plot than like you originally thought. You originally thought she was not that important. And then she kind of is like, important later on which was weird but this being a satire i also felt like their relationship seems like they make it makes fun of female friendships in a way and like they tolerate each other and like low-key hate each other but they're best friends you know and it's like the relationship is just continuing out of habit more than anything you know that's what i got the vibe from their relationship but um, overall of the characters, it's like Wimmy and Alicia are the most realistic, okay? But I don't, and for me, the most sympathetic character is Alicia. I think they're the most realistic, but I don't think that they are supposed to be, like, likable at all. Which is one thing, like, I saw through the reviews and negative reviews is that everyone would just be like, I hated everyone in this book, everyone in this book is terrible. And I was like, that is true. But I found it fun. I really did. I was like, just trash people having stupid conversations and making fun of each other, that's fine. Do, would I hang out with any of these people in real life? No, but I just like being a fly on the wall in this has, in this sense, okay? Um, yeah. Hmm, I don't know, maybe I did say, like I'm looking at my review guide and I did say that it's made, you're made to like sympathize maybe with the losers and envy the popular crowd, but that's just how Remy and Alicia feel. You know, and you just recognize them as losers a little bit too, because it's like, why do you care about the co worker you had a crush on two years ago? That's mental illness. That doesn't make sense. I like, you just, for me, it's still weird to me, like when my co workers just want to talk to each other, not on the clock, just shooting the breeze for fun, because I guess they like each other for real. Baffles me. Because <laughs> I'm here for a check. I'm here to pay bills. I'm here because I'm a cog in the capitalist machine. But y'all here just chatting it up. Strange, strange. But I, 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 I digress. And then we're going to move on to the plot, okay? Part of me doesn't want to, I don't want to rehash like every single thing of this plot. But basically they're all 20-somethings just uh, surviving in New York, all right? Remy and Alicia are service workers and they live with Jake. You know, that's how they're making it. Um, they run into Jen at an Apple store, okay? And she invites him on, invites them on this vacation. Everything is going pretty well, actually, like, too well for Alicia. Alicia is fitting in more so than Remy is. Remy's like, he runs into a lot of awkward instances because you are going to, when you obsess over someone in your head and then you act like you're so close, or like you act like you know them and there's you're relying on so much familiarity. Familiarity? What in that that just be making up words. 
call me Dr. Seuss. I just really do be making up words. But no, you're like, <laughs> he's relying on this like familiarity with her. Okay, she's, she's not giving it to you. So then it's like, it's awkward. Okay, it's, it was weird. And I just really like, some people, this was also another thing that people had uh, qualms about with the touch of Jen. It was like it was boring and it's just like a lot of them talking for like the longest time. And I mean, it, I listened to an audiobook, but for me, that was interesting. You know, so I'm like, I don't know if I had seen that and if I was reading it, would I be, would still be enthralled? But I do like dialogue as a reader, as a writer, so maybe I would. I thought the dialogue was pretty good, so I would have no problem with all those talking scenes. Um, especially if I thought it was, it's like a social commentary and she's just making fun of these people and people who have conversations like this, you know? But anyway, um, they go on this, uh, event and Alicia is kind of like sinking her way into the inner circle of Jen. She's actually becoming her friend and they bring up this book called The Apple Bush, which is pretty much like this weird manifest your best self. It's a self-help book. It's all the cliches thrown into one, you know, apples don't even grow on bushes. Well, if you read the book, you would get that. <laughs> like, you would understand that's the point. Like, that's literally like a line in there. Um, but yeah, so it's like Carla and Jen have both read this book and then they are like recommending it to everybody on the trip. And then something happens where Alicia is like sleep, she sleepwalks into Jen's room and that makes Jen just like be so like, oh, you're creepy, you know? So she doesn't like her anymore and it makes the trip really awkward so then they have to go home. And Alicia kind of becomes obsessed, like she reads the apple bush, I think, and then she kind of becomes obsessed with making her like own sensory deprivation tank, okay? Um, and just like bettering herself, like she just, she's trying to become her best self now after reading that, um, that book, the apple bush and her best self just happens to kind of be Jen, you know? Um, but like, I think Alicia doesn't really, this is all told kind of through third person. And I don't think Alicia really questions that. And it's not looked at as weird for her as she's doing this. You know, she's just like trying to become her best self. But then like you realize this is a kind of coincides with her playing around as Jen. Um, and then she runs into Jen at her new job where she's, told the people that her name is Jen and it freaks her out of course freaks Jen out and Horace is like well maybe it's just a misunderstanding which was which was stupid but he's like a mediator always and then so Jen is scared and runs off and then like shortly after this this is when this is what I would mark as the turning point for this book when it's like this is when it just it did that genre dive okay because then Alicia dies in a freak bike accident just to, <laughs> I was so shocked. I was so shocked because you Donnie, it's a Donnie Darko. You don't kill the main character. You don't do that. You just don't do it. You don't do it in your own movie. And then so I was, every time it happens, I'm just like, wow, I respect you so much. I'm like, you really did just kill off that main character. No skin off your nose. You're like, you don't, it doesn't matter. Everyone's expendable to me. So yes, she dies. And then Remy has to go through the motions of the funeral and everything, all while being in intense denial that she's actually dead. He's like, I can't believe she's actually dead. She's not dead. I'm going gonna, gonna to go home and she's going to be there or something. Okay. That's what he's thinking. And then Jake, is like he recommends this grief app where it like analyzes all the text messages you have with this person and you can kind of text your dead loved one okay so Remy gets on that and he thinks sometimes Alicia is speaking to him to him through the app and it's weird okay but um and then like all the while he's been seeing this weird thing that only he seems to see and then like hearing something too along with it and it's apparently this monster they call it something in the book like a Para it's, I don't know what it's like a, it's a monster though okay and it's like this paranormal thing um and it's supposed to be in the manifestation of the obstacle keeping someone from their best self and that someone is Alicia so it's the obstacle keeping her from becoming her best self okay and Remy keeps misinterpreting like what this obstacle means like he first he thinks that of like he for some reason he's gonna have to kill Horace because that's the obstacle and obviously Alicia wants him to be with Jen. He kept he kept misinterpreting like what her what that meant, like how he's gonna stop this monster. And it was only made me more frustrated and annoyed with him. But anyway, um 
long story short, he ends up like at Jen and Horace's apartment and this monster appears. And so they're running for their lives and basically it, it kills everybody. Kills everybody. Um, all the friends, Carla, Jake, Horace. I'm pretty sure Horace died. No, Jake died. I was mad about that. I was like, Jake, my boy is innocent, but okay. Um, yeah, and then so like as it's chasing them, he kind of realized like Remy realizes like it looks like Jen, okay, this monster. And so he starts hitting Jen and then the monster dies. So he kind of has to beat up Jen to save himself. But then he drags Jen's body into like the self-made deprivation, sensory deprivation tank that uh, Alicia made. And then like she crawls out of there. Alicia, role playing as Jen, climbs out of the hot tub. And that's the end of the story. That's it. I don't even think I explained that well. I think like you, like I just re gave you a rundown of everything that happens and you're like, I'm still confused. And honestly, I feel like I'm more confused than I read it. I read it myself and I'm like, did that, is that what happened? I tried, I tried, but that's not really important. Okay, the plot's not that important because I'm going to talk about themes. <laughs> We're going to talk about themes now, okay? And that's really what I what I like about this book. Okay, so the first theme for me was like obsession slash parasocial relationships, okay? Because that's what I needed. That's what I need. I needed art based around this phenomenon in our society, okay? So I'm first gonna give like a definition, okay, parasocial relationships. Just cause I feel like that's throwing that word out there, might as well define it. Okay, so parasocial relationships are one-sided relationships where one person extends emotional energy, interest, and time, and the other party, the persona, is completely unaware of the other's existence. Sounds dreamy, huh? Anyway, but yeah, so this is the central theme of A Touch of Jen, in my opinion, okay? Like this parasocial relationship, that was the main draw for me. I'm speaking, I'm like, that's the main draw. There's no story without Alicia and Remy's obsession with Jen. And a lot of this obsession is easily fueled like by Instagram and social media. It's like their only contact with her after two years. Okay, I still can't get like, who is thinking about their coworker? And it's been two years. Maybe I just haven't had enough jobs, but I could not, it could not be me. It could not be me. I'm just not doing that. Shoot. I try to avoid anyone in my high, I still don't want to see anybody from high school. So, but whatever, <laughs> moving on. Um, so with the parasocial relationships, everyone is guilty of this to an extent, right? Because influencers wouldn't be able to pay their bills if like we weren't, if it, that, if the parasocial relationship didn't exist there wouldn't be like YouTubers and bloggers and influencers and celebrities to an extent. Um, they just all depend on the psychological parasocial connection. And I'm just like, that's, I don't know, that's mind boggling to me. Cause it's just how much of our society is ran by that desire or that strange real relationship to the person who's feeling it, you know? Um, but you've never met that person. You just know everything else about them but you never met them and you never will in many cases. It's really just, it's weird, okay? But anyway, the, we also know this like through, it's true from like the existence of fan fiction and self-insert fan fiction, like Wattpad, archives of our own, uh, fanfiction.net, all of those things. So people be doing it. Uh, but the, but the difference is that the people who write those stories, I'm sure, like, aren't going around, like, broadcasting the fact that they fantasize about these people. Like, you, you can make jokes about it. You can make jokes, you know, that, like, Chris Evans is my husband. You can say it. You can say it. But it's weird. It's weird when you just accept it, all right? And that's what makes, like, this book so uncomfortable and, like, Remy and Alicia's relationship so uncomfortable is that they so willfully indulge in this obsession and this fantasy of about another person together too and it's just it's voyeuristic and it's uh it's, it makes me shudder it makes me shudder because like mm, i don't know it, it goes into my next point because it's like the duality of social media is the other theme for me okay the duality of social media and what i mean by that is you have like it's 
social media is portrayed as kind of this control in your life because you get to control the narrative, you can control what you post, you can build your life from like one post at a time. You can post only the good things or only the bad things and you can use little captions and whatever. But we all know that's not a true representation of who we are. You know, it could never completely cover everything that we experience in our life, in our day to day, who we are as people. We're too complex for that, okay? To, to be simplified onto a little app, too complex, okay? But like that's the only control you have is that profile and then you don't have control over what is commented and you don't have control over how how many people see it and how people see it like how people view it and you you know whatever you create and then that's a weird thing too with just like social media is if you turn comments off it's like seeing that act of just turning off your comments is seen as like inherently guilty or like it's an act of cowardice or something uh it's really weird but then it's like I think of poor Jen and her situation of like just living your life going about you know day-to-day -day things and then there's this random couple that is just pretending to be you in their sex life just using your personality to revitalize their sex life and what can you do about it absolutely nothing absolutely nothing I mean she doesn't know so it can't hurt her but it's still so weird and then I think of people with like only fans and stuff and I'm just like, it's like your lives are in so much danger because like this parasocial relationship, this psychological thing can be so strong. It's so real. Like we've already seen it with stalkers who've like gone and killed their idols or whatever. It's just, it's, mm -mm. it's just so weird. Gosh. But anyway, I thought this, <laughs> this book, um, really touches on those two things, like the parent parasocial relationship that we all have with social media and like influencers and people we like on YouTube, people we like to watch on YouTube and they depend to, on us to a degree and they can stage meet and greets and all that, but they're not going to remember your name. They're not really going to remember your face. Okay. And if they do, it's like, well, good for you, but it's not for everybody. You know, not everybody's going to feel that way. And then with uh, social media and like it's a dangerous thing, but I mean, I guess it's, it does so much good, but then it's just the dangers of it, of someone becoming obsessed with you or stalking you and taking it and taking it too far, just crossing boundaries. And I think that's honestly like a lot of children too, who are raised on the internet, it's like they have no respect and don't really like understand the context of the situation. Like I've seen like with TikTok people who had some serious stuff go on in their life. Like I'm talking like, you know, a sexual assault was, and then they, like their comments would be people making jokes about that, you know? And it's, it's because like you invited them, like they're making entertainment for you that you think they're your friend, but they're not your friend. And so even if you were a friend, why would you joke like that? You don't know them. Why would you joke about their trauma that way? There's just a lack of respect. And it, but it's so weird because I feel like it's not addressed enough. Like this parasocial relationship is not addressed enough and then it's not, there's no rules or boundaries for it either. But it goes down to just respect, but also perspective. Cause there's kids out here who really just don't know. Like y'all just grew up on the internet and, it acts, and you act like you don't know that you can't say certain things or you shouldn't say to certain things to people you don't know. But we're moving off of that one, okay? We're moving off of those. Moving on to the third um, theme for me, which was socially influenced self-improvement. Okay. Well, really just self-improvement, but uh, this mostly comes into play with Alicia because for me, she's like the only character I cared about in the whole thing. The only character I was rooting for was Alicia. And I kind of just wanted Alicia to be like, to leave Remy, obviously, because he, he sucks. I, we don't have to be with this man. We don't. We could find somebody else. We could have a glow up baby. We don't even, I mean, we could just accept ourselves. That's what I wanted for her. That's what I wanted. I wanted her to just glow up and love herself, okay? But that did not happen. Um, it's just like her boyfriend repeatedly lust, after, openly lust after this former coworker and we just, we just accept that and it bothers me a lot, okay? Um, I was rooting for her, I was just rooting for her, but that doesn't happen, and instead she goes off, like, 
her self-improvement is all like socially influenced and for me I'm like if it's influenced by anything other than a therapist it's not real self-improvement okay it's not real self-improvement especially cuz like trigger warning she talks about like overcoming an eating disorder um, pretty bluntly in the novel uh, I think it was like bulimia but she talks about it pretty bluntly and it causes like awkwardness whenever she brings it up because she brings it up just like so like casually um, which I was like I like that about Alicia I was like I like that she would just say that but so <laughs> um, because it's like if it's just the fact of life we treat it like that I mean that's true I liked her for that I don't know I really liked Alicia she was my favorite character but anyway I keep losing my train of thought I feel but yeah, so she goes about this self-improvement like so wrong because she's like trying to fix herself to in like in the eyes of society. Like she's trying to make herself desirable according to what society has deemed is desirable. And we know that's bull crap. Like ain't nobody care what any that's like I'm like self-improvement you should have is just accepting who you are and just learning to love who you are, you know, and just being like, screw you if you don't like it. That's what I wanted for her. That's what I want for everybody, that confidence, you know? Mm. I don't have it all days, but I do pretty much. I'm just like, this is me, you know? This is I, this is what you're gonna get. I actually, in high school, I went through a phase where I was like, I don't like makeup simply because it's called makeup. And what are you making up for? What are you lacking? I don't like it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't like what it implies. <laughs> I, I'm like, that's so stupid. And now I'm jealous of people who were really good at makeup. But anyway, I had a hill to die on. And I sure did die on it. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so her influence, like she never, poor Leech, never asked like any questions to get into like, why is she, why does she let Remy treat her this way? Why is she in a relationship with a man who obviously loves someone else? Why is she role playing this woman? What makes Jen better than her? You know, what makes Jen desirable? Why am I obsessed with her? She just feeds into it because that's their connection. Um, yeah, and then like, what is she gonna do? That's one connection she has. It felt like she was like, I can't, both of them are so insecure in a way that they're like this, I can't get any better. So I'm just gonna settle with this, which I hate. Because I, if I was insecure, I would just be by myself. Like, I don't wanna be with someone else because that's like so much energy. But I'm also an introvert. Like, I'm just like, I'm not just with another person. You don't even like them that much. They're, you're okay some days. Like, tolerating another person for that long. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But anyway, <laughs> we're gonna go move on to the final stage takeaway, okay? I actually watched an interview of Beth Morgan given by Jean Keung Frazier, who wrote uh, Pizza Girl, which was really cool. It was a really cool interview, and I'll link it below um, if you want to watch it. But, I mean, if you ever read the book, then I don't see why you would, but hey, maybe. She was cool. From my, like, just from the interview, I was like, Beth is a cool girl. She never had the, she was never a Remy or an Alicia. She was cool. She didn't care. <laughs> but anyway, um... One amazing thing I learned in that interview was that she started over this, she started the book or the draft for A Touch of Jen eight times and Alicia wasn't even in the first draft, which I was like, that's a book I wouldn't have read. Simply, I wouldn't have read that. That would have been a no for me. The wedding would have been so different. And it was like more like uh, Remy, Horace, and Jen somehow would have been like the main players and I was like that's stupid man nobody want that <laughs> that's boring <laughs> I'm so glad she added uh Alicia but anyway Beth mainly talked about how she wanted to make a genre defying book okay like a book that just switches tones so it has a dramatic tonal shift in the like uh later half and I mean she definitely did that I just kind of hate that it's that precise 
thing that has divided so many people on A Touch of Gin. Like if you go in the comments, or not the comments, the reviews of A Touch of Gin on Goodreads, you know, it's people who like kind of, I think, tapped out before. If we were like, these are terrible people, I can't take it. Da, da, da. And then there's people who are like, okay, I love this, like, the, the, like the twist ending with the whole monster thing, okay? And Alicia becoming Jen, I love that element. And there's people I wish it was, it just stuck to the social commentary and I thought it was stronger before it went there. And then there's people who it isolated in confusion and were like, I don't even know what to make of that. For me, I loved it because I thought it was like, it's just the epitome or it's the saying, be careful what you wish for, for me. Because like Alicia steps out of that hot tub as Jen, you know? And then what I envision, I'm just like, that's what they do for the rest of their life. They just, she just pretends to be Jen for the rest of their life. Now, I don't know how the heck they gonna escape suspicion from the police after all these bodies pop up. But um, <laughs> I'm thinking somehow they could escape that, whatever. And then I'm thinking like, Remy will just be belittled. I hope this power in their relationship shifts to uh, Alicia as Jen and she belittles him because I think that's what Remy really wants deep down. Like I kind of think he wants to be belittled and he wants to be treated like a loser sometimes and then she'll make him feel like, you know, like he's not, a I, I don't know, he won her or something and they'll just go sleep together. And that's the end. Like I'm, I guess it's a happy ending for Alicia, but not really, because I mean, Alicia didn't get to be Alicia. But I mean, she feels good, she feels hot, she's Jen now. So, mm. yeah, even I'm still kind of like confused at the end of this review, but I liked it. it that's what it means. I liked it, and I do want to buy it, and I do want to put it uh, with my other books on this shelf. I would love that, because it does have a really pretty cover. But, um, yeah, that was my review of A Touch of Jen. Tell me what you thought, if that was coherent, if that made sense at all. Um, yeah, and if you want to read it, you know, if I piqued your interest, please read it, please, because I really thought it was good. I really liked it. So anyway, yeah, so that's been Sketchbooks and Book Books. Go read a book book. Have some thoughtsy watsies, and I'll holla at you later. Mm -hmm.